Are we moving to Nashville? Are we? I'm there all the time anyway, recording music. We have community there. And it's also less hot than Phoenix. And Nashville might be the spot. So many factors can affect breastfeeding. Before having kids, I never once thought that this would be emotional at all. Just, yeah, feed your baby. What the heck? But it's so much more than that. I got officially diagnosed with ADHD. Let's just give it up I for that. I don't think I should make jokes about it. Jokes about my hair loss or making jokes about ADHD? Both. Okay. <laughs> Do you catch a different breeze? It's honestly, feel like, feel my head. It feels so fun to just, like, touch. I will be honest though i don't think it looks good to be, com <laughs> to be completely honest i do miss your okay. <laughs> this episode of unplanned is brought to you by kleenex ultra soft tissues your ally to help tackle your allergy symptoms this season for this allergy season grab kleenex and face allergies head on welcome back to unplanned everybody thank you for being here we are so stoked that you're here our whole family is sick we've been sick i have been really sick <laughs> oh, it's been a cause of controversy in our family <laughs> Abby has this belief okay. that if no, you no, are no, sick, Matt. that you can manifest your way out of it. And honestly, babe, I love the idea, but man, when I'm sick, I need to rest. I need to sleep. There's a couple <laughs> things we need to unpack there. Okay, what do you For say? one, every wife, sound off in the comments right now. When your husband is sick with the same thing that you just recovered... <laughs> from i don't want to matt look at me i don't want to invalidate you i know you don't feel good i know all too well because i just had it it just looked a little differently when i had it. matt is convinced that he is just a million times sicker than okay, i was except I, I went at the gym running after our children i was working i was moving the whole time and you, I, gotta, you and, gotta psych yourself out hey, of sickness and matt is just on death's bed right now um, let me say <laughs> let me say there were multiple days where I was like, hey, you sleep in, I'll get up with the kids. Then then after a while, I think you were like, I'm going to tough through the sickness. So then you, I don't know why you did this to yourself. You're like, I'm going to go to the gym to work out at freaking 6 a.m. I don't know why you did that, but you did. All I power, love it. All power to you. But... I will say I think I got the I think I got the shorter end of the stick with the sickness part <laughs> because dude like it's been insane. I felt like I was gonna die yesterday. Yeah, I never. I literally I felt did. Really sick. I did, and I I was like caught hacking out like snot. I don't want to be nasty on this podcast, but it was it was horrible. Like I couldn't breathe and. I got hit. I don't know. I luckily got medicine. I went to the doctor yesterday that prescribed me some pseudoephedrine and some <laughs> other things. But holy frick, it was it was bad. See, for me, I feel like sickness is like 80 percent a state of mind 20 percent physical you can't overcome it 80 percent if you get up and moving a body in motion stays in motion you can outrun the infection in my mind so like when i'm running i'm like man i'm running i must feel good so That's then i not... actually physically feel good your mind is powerful matt i'm sure some psychologists could co comment and be like yeah matt actually in your brain you can overcome anything i love that for you i will say it works for me when i was at the doctor yesterday i said hey should i hold off and go back to the gym and he was like oh yes don't don't try to get back into the gym of course they're gonna it'll, say that it'll make you sicker like you'll you'll end up coming back in here being like yeah i got sick again bunch so he, of weenies he said that, <laughs> i don't wait are you a doctor did you go to medical school no, I, but I didn't I'm know healthy that you did now that. and you're not so <laughs> you gave it to me though i got it like i got it like five days after you so yeah anyway it's been so, so sad we had one kid with yeah, freaking pink it's eye it's worse when the kids are well, sick yeah, one kid with pink eye one kid with croup now we have that like breathing device that you use on your kid to help them breathe no, better and the other kid with the science like so it's, sad it's hard because it's like i could keep them inside all day and they honestly we'd probably still get sick but not yeah. as sick but I'm like, I want them to like be around other kids. I think it's so good for them. And obviously, like they don't go to daycare, so it's like I'm already like they need to have some social interaction. But then of course it brings with it a couple sicknesses, which they're gonna be just fine. But then, it is just so sad. When and you sick. weren't fitting, finishing your prescription, which I told the doctor. I was like, I asked the doctor yesterday, doctor, how do I get my wife to finish her prescription medication? Because if not, won't she like develop? She could potentially develop a super no, bug in her body. I think it's affecting my milk though, so I don't want to do it. But so this doctor was like, how? And I, I asked the doctor this, like, how do I get my wife to finish her medicine? Because I know it's like unsafe to not finish the medicine. And he was like, dude, if I knew how to convince my wife to do things, I would be a very wealthy man. <laughs> he, no, actually, his quote, wealthy. He was just like making a point, like he would write some book or develop oh, some podcast about oh. how to get your wife to do something that you want her to do. But I just, I'm just concerned for you because I know with I antibiotics, great. if you don't finish an antibiotic, you can develop a superbug in your body because the the bacteria or whatever will develop resistance. So it's like it's not safe. I you. never heard that before. Okay, you can literally look it up, Abby. I just, I, I care about. No, you. I've heard that if you don't finish a prescription, it can come back. 
<laughs> I'm aware of that. Yes, but then the superbug thing is like a legit thing. <laughs> Can you manifest what your way this? out of that one? A too? superhero movie? I don't really understand. Okay, it comes, just, the villain comes funny, back worse and stronger. What's funny about you is you definitely. I'm picturing something from Stranger <laughs> Things. Okay. You definitely don't believe in manifesting unless it's with illness. Like with illness, you think you can just think okay, your way out stop. of it. Stop. Don't even go there. For real. I believe that your mind is powerful and I feel like you can create things for yourself with your mind. I do so believe, I guess I do believe in manifesting. I do believe that too. But I, I don't believe, believe obviously, I don't think, I think there's very few people in the world that their perception of manifesting is like, right now, I'm going to fly. Like, no one really thinks that. When also, they think that, they're just saying that you need to envision something happening, and then your likelihood of that thing happening will happen. <laughs> I hope you get to feel better soon, <laughs> babe, because so, the whole so family is hoping for that. I feel, actually, yesterday, I felt like I was going to die. I'm trying to be calm and, like, I really sweet. appreciate you taking care of the kids Thank yesterday you. and, like, doing everything because I was so... I Wait, did you just fart or was that no, your that's stomach? My stomach? Okay. Um <laughs> I felt so, so sick. So thank you for taking the reins yesterday. That really meant a lot. I'm happy to do it. It's just <laughs> it's just funny. Yeah. I'm like, Matt, I had what you had. It just didn't look the same. So Abby, you are on month seven now of breastfeeding slash pumping. You're pumping now. I'm on month do you, twenty-seven do of you, breastfeeding. Minus one. Holy crap. I didn't even think about that. There was only one month where I wasn't breastfeeding. 27 there. months of breastfeeding. How Minus does that feel? Minus one. So technically 26. Okay. Almost consecutive months. How do you feel? Do you feel like a, I feel over like a cow? <laughs> no, I feel over it. Yeah. But there's still part of me that is hanging on there. What makes you want to breastfeed so bad? Like, is there like this innate, this like drive inside of you that's like, feed your kid? Mm -hmm. I was talking yeah. with another mom about this. It's like in our heads... I understand that fed is best. That like yeah. making sure that your baby is fed, that is best. And I would be the first to encourage a dear friend or family member be like, hey, if it's too much right now, like fed is best. Like there's great formulas yeah. on the market, like all this stuff. I like believe that so firmly for everyone but myself. Yeah. For me, I'm like, yeah. I just want to continue to do this as long as I have milk. Because for me, it's like I'm... I'm not like some of these other moms that have to go work all day, like in a different mm. setting away from their baby. And like, that would make it a million times harder. Like I have it yeah. about as convenient as it can be. It's like, I'm going to suck it up and do it. And that's kind of how I feel. Mama ain't raised no quitter. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so when are you, when are you going to stop um, pumping? When, when's your, to when I dry up, which honestly Wait, is probably what? coming soon because of those freaking antibiotics. Ah, okay. So that, yeah. That makes sense. I, I can understand now why you didn't want to finish your antibiotic because of the breastfeeding situation. Yeah, my milk supply is down to like, sometimes when I pump, I get like maybe two ounces. Yeah, I don't know. I'm just I'm just team. I don't want my wife to develop a super bug in her body and die. So You know I'm what like, happens if I get a super bug? What? I will it out of my body. <laughs> you manifest and the I super just bug run, run away from it. Okay. For those of you that don't know. Should I explain my breastfeeding journey? Yeah, in a we're nutshell? let's let's so yeah, catch in July up of 2022 was when I started nursing. Our baby, first baby, was born, and those things got to the size of basketballs. It was insane. Oh my gosh, it was insane because you're you're a woman that is gifted in that area, and so like <laughs> then with the breastfeeding, it was it was unreal. It like, was I like, felt bad for you because it was yeah, painful for take you. Take anything attractive out of your mind. It was. <laughs> Was, you, have a, you have a picture on your they phone. They were not cute. I took a picture because I was like, this is unreal. I need to save this to show my girlfriends. And so, yeah, when I see one of my girlfriends or even just a random stranger <laughs> that we start talking about breastfeeding, I'm like, oh, you know, look at what mine looks like. And I showed them and they're like, oh, sister. Like, and most people are like, yeah, same. Because it happens. Like your milk just comes in so strong. And my tatas <laughs> were tutus. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> they're huge. <laughs> So nasty, like not attractive, not cute, did just did not even look right. Like my they were so firm that a wire bra, like it like rejected it. Like it was like, no, we're gonna be the shape we wanna be. It was just so bad. And so that happened both times. Anyway, milk came in. That baby loved to nurse. He would nurse all the time. We started nursing him in the night, on the airplanes. Like he just loved milk. He just loved it. And then I got pregnant four months into nursing him. He was four months old. We got pregnant. Yeah. When I think about that unexpected positive pregnancy test, I'm not thinking about Augie at all, like our mm -hmm. second son. Not even close, but like that moment, there was a moment of sadness because I thought that I was going to have to stop nursing because I was like, wait, I don't know if that, how you can breastfeed while being pregnant. 
all these things um, after talking with my doctor. And honestly, because of like sheer luck, my milk supply stayed because for most people, Matt, their milk supply dries up when they get pregnant. And then I had a break and then we had our second kid and he was way harder to nurse because he would just be screaming his head off. He was crying. I was crying. We had to like sprint and do acrobatics to get him to latch. Do you remember that? That was the most stressful it time It was of my so life. stressful and he finally got the hang of it. Mom finally got the hang of it and we did that from the taps for five months and then randomly, which honestly this, I was thinking about this. When I switched to exclusively pumping also was when my grandpa died hmm. because um, at that point he was only nursing on one side. He like completely started to reject the other side and I was so distraught that like the thought of making that process like nursing and pumping and bottle feeding when we were traveling back home we were like sleeping on random couches and like trying to get through each day with funeral plans yeah. and like everything. I was like I cannot add make this element any more stressful and time consuming so that's when I switched to um, exclusively pumping. So I was just thinking, I don't, I don't remember the last time I ever nursed Augie, which makes me a little sad. But I know it was like the day that he died, probably. I'm sorry. Yeah, it's just weird how like so many factors can affect a woman's breastfeeding. Because mm -hmm. it's like you wouldn't think that those two would be related, but it really just impacts every part of your life when you are your source your baby's source of nutrition thank you to athena club for sponsoring today's episode hairy girls <laughs> hear me out abby's a hairy gal i am and we and love you know her what? here's the thing you can love my lashes you can love the eyebrows but know that it doesn't not come at a cost i have hair in unwanted places as well and that is why i always bring my athena club razor with me when i'm traveling i i need a razor at all times the athena razors are truly worth the hype if you haven't tried it you really need to give it a shot step up your shaving game now with athena club's award-winning razor kit it's seriously the best on the market and here's why first of all the athena club razor kit is an absolute steal it's just ten dollars ten dollars wait ten bucks that's it and this economy it feels like everything's quadruple in price so i'm shocked that it's only 10 bucks yep but don't let the price fool you this razor packs a serious punch it comes with a beautifully made ergonomic handle and two super sharp razor heads that deliver an incredibly smooth shave every single time it also comes with a magnetic hook so you can like stick your little thing in the shower and it won't let the water sit on your blade making it rusty and nasty these razors really truly have amazing quality it glides effortlessly on the skin because it also has these five precision engineered blades five blades you guys they're perfectly spaced apart to let hair pass through them so it doesn't irritate your skin or get caught or gunk up your razor they have these built-in skin guards which is also why i don't cut myself using these which are really nice for the skin moisturizing you really can't beat the athena club razors less irritation less razor bumps doesn't leave your legs dried out and dull they're amazing and if you're ready to upgrade your shaving experience you can switch now to the best razor on the market and show your skin you care with athena club head over to athenaclub.com to try their award-winning razor and body products and get 20 percent off your purchase with code unplanned at checkout you can also find athena club razors at your local target store trust me you won't look back happy shaving back to the episode it really affects everything and it's it's such a mental game too like just thinking about when you can be away do you have enough milk store and if you if they do need to eat and you're not there and like how long has it been like am I going to be able to nurse in this public space like there's so many questions and it's such a mind game and it can be really really stressful but it can also be like so bonding and beautiful and it's like how our bodies were designed it's a really emotional thing and I think before having kids I never once would have thought that this would be emotional at all I'm like just yeah feed your baby mm -hmm. what the heck but it's so much more than that and I don't even think they fully understand it because you know there's like conditions tied to your breast milk letting down, which means like it's coming really? out. Like you can have um, a condition that makes you feel like extremely depressed when your milk lets down. And so like those women have to stop because it or oh gosh. because it like it's there's just a massive connection between that and your hormones. I'm not a doctor or anything, okay. so I don't really know. Yeah, are women able to take like antidepressants and stuff if they're breastfeeding i don't think so okay that sucks because uh, i actually don't what? can i look it up because i don't want to say something. oh yeah yeah, yeah. Well, i'm just i'm just thinking about that because there's so many hormonal changes and i mean that would be really hard if you can't take your medicine or take whatever it is that you you need for your mental health because you're trying to feed your baby Oh, maybe you can. It says infant exposure of antidepressants through breast milk is generally low to very low. Oh, okay. So 
it's probably a conversation to have with your doctor about your dosage like if it's like too high or something yeah so you can i don't know you probably don't also want to take that though if it's only linked to your milk letting down you know so i don't know there's so many different factors and i think that if one thing was different i probably wouldn't still be nursing but because the factors are pretty favorable for us not for nursing but for pumping because i do think there's probably a difference there i should say um we're still pumping away but i'm not making enough milk for my baby every single day so it's kind of stressing me out that our milk supply in the freezer is dwindling so um yeah my goal is to make it to 12 months he's seven months now i don't know if we're gonna make it but if not i know there's a lot of formulas on the market and i know that i can suck it up i just think there's something innate about a mother wanting to just be needed by their baby in that way i don't i think honestly if i were to talk with a therapist they'll probably be like abby i don't think it's about the breast milk i think it's about being needed by your baby oh that's good i think that's what it is that's sweet no your baby does need you i know yeah you're so loved why do i i think it's the cameras and the lights like it's like oh everyone's looking at you and then it's like my emotions are heightened i don't i don't even cry anymore do you understand that yeah, you have been crying a lot less. I've realized that Abby, I I, don't cry. I was so used to pregnant Abby that like I, me too. you kind of feel like a different person in a way. Yeah, I've, now. I'm so healthy now. And I also kind of feel like I'm different. I mean, I, I just shaved my head. Like, <laughs> yeah, can we talk about that? You are a totally different person. I'm kind of. I've, I've made a lot of changes. You're the artist now. Just got diagnosed with ADHD. <laughs> Could have some other stuff going on. No, you don't. Yeah, you never know. So, um, what do you what do you think about my uh, my buzz cut? I love <laughs> that moment for you because you I do. had to feel extremely freeing. I knew it was something you thought about for a long time. Yeah, and I love the fact that like you can just pull triggers. Yeah. So I am happy that you had that moment. I think like buzzing my head made me realize how insecure I've really been my whole life without even realizing it. Mm. like i don't know i've always relied so much on outside opinions for confidence and like a boost in self-esteem and i kind of just decided to send it because i thought it would i i honestly thought it would look good i thought it would look cool or or i was at least hoping that it would but one of the big factors in like actually making the decision to buzz all the hair off was hey regardless if it looks good or bad i have value as an individual and i don't need to like look view myself as less than even if it doesn't look good if that makes sense Mm -hmm. that's kind of deep but that's yeah i mean for me that's like a no-brainer i know i feel like you've always had so much more confidence than me like i i would love to walk a day in your shoes and like know what it's like to be that confident and to know what it's like to not care as much what people think about well don't get me me, don't get me wrong it's not like i don't ever feel like embarrassed or insecure about things i just i don't know i wonder if my brain is different than your brain in that way probably i feel like you're so much more comfortable in your skin than i am what makes you think that you know um i don't know i i think like okay something about me that i've realized like when i'm when i meet new people or or i walk into a room a constant thought in my head is, am I being perceived as normal? Are people liking the way I'm acting? Do people like me? Am I acting cool? Am I am I acting weird? Did I do something that offended somebody? Like, I'm so nervous that I'm gonna F something up. Like, I'm so nervous hey. that I'm not gonna be like a normal human being. And I don't know, I just, I've always wanted to- Do you think that, sorry to interrupt. What's up? No, you're but right. just to, to touch on that, like, do you think that that makes it more difficult for you to listen when you're meeting new people and like trying to have conversations um because you have all that like mental noise i mean look i so the thing is like i i do love meeting new people but then there are situations where i get nervous and in my head and uh where i get like super insecure in a way and like a discovery that i i've just had just this past month is i don't have to be everybody's friend I don't need everyone to like me. And I actually want to be more open and honest about who I truly am when I do meet new people because I want to quickly establish, are we going to vibe? Are we going to be friends? Do you like me? Do I like you? And rather than coming from a mindset of, oh my gosh, I hope they like me, I have more of the mindset now of like, do I like them? And I think when you're just more open and honest about who you truly are with other people, you're able to establish those those deeper bonds faster because you can clearly see, oh, this person 
we don't connect as much, but oh, this other person, I actually really connect with them. That's good. Yeah. I want you to find confidence and just like peace and self-assurance. Yeah. I mean, honestly, there's been uh, like we went and saw that Hunger Games movie, which I think we talked about this on the podcast where the main actor buzzed his hair in the movie and it looked really good. And that was the initial inspiration to to buzz my hair off. I was like, oh, that looks sick. Like I could maybe do that. And then I thought about Brad Pitt and Mr. and Mrs. Smith. He buzzes it like his. He has a. He's rocking a buzz cut. When how why, when did we watch that movie? We watched it like a year ago. It's oh, a pretty and that cool just movie. Sticked, stuck in your mind. He, he looks like a freaking stud in that movie. And then you also you look have, just like him. I I really don't. <laughs> I really do not. And I then you and then you have Nick Jonas. Nick Jonas buzzed his uh, hair. That's right. When he released his his new music back in like 2016. Maybe that was like. Is it easier to maintain for you? Like, is the maintenance pretty easy? The the maintenance is unreal. Like, I literally don't. Do you do anything. catch a different breeze? It's honestly feel like feel my head. It feels no. So, trust me, I feel it a lot. It it feels so fun to just like touch and and play with it. I will be honest though. I don't think it looks good. To be complete, <laughs> to be completely honest, I kind of go back and forth. I'm, I'm like, oh man, I look so tough. Like, I kind of look like tough military dude, whatever. And then there's other times that I'm just like. Oh, frick, I think you can, military, you they have to make it shorter than that. Yeah, but then I'm like, you can freaking see my receding hairline. So that I sucks. don't think it's receding. 1,000% it's receding. I feel receding. like it's always been if that you, way. If you look at like Brad Pitt and Nick Jonas, when well, they yeah, have their Well, yeah, but don't you cuts, think yours has always been that way? Mine's, I've, I've always had like a slight widow's peak maybe. Yeah. I don't know, but um, mine's definitely receded more as I've gotten older. Really? Yeah, so I'll probably realistically i'll probably get like a, a hair transplant surgery at some point in my don't, life don't just let I it go will. bald I, man I, mean, I could but i just feel like i would love the look of hair more than here's what being you do bald. you go bald and then you tattoo your hair on dude honestly i kind of want to just do a social experiment <laughs> and fly to turkey and see how good the turkish surgeons are with Matt, hair. maybe not maybe maybe have you heard about that it's literally like 90 percent cheaper to get your hair transplant surgery in turkey so have people you done fly research there. into this Where'd you... like a lot of people know about this there's tiktoks of uh groups of men boarding airplanes and they all are balding and then they come back with bandages on their heads on the same airplane. I don't, something they, about that is unsettling Because they go to Turkey to get their hair surgery done. Hmm. Mike from Logan Paul's podcast got his hair surgery done in Turkey. Wow. Yeah. So <laughs> it's, it's like a, it's a common thing. <laughs> yeah. But no, I, I actually ordered some collagen. I ordered some biotin. I've got all sorts of- Do you take it so though? I haven't been okay. taking it. <laughs> You're really good at adding to cart and purchasing, but just not kind of like your ADHD medicine. Yeah, yeah. So, I don't care if you take that, by the way. It's just funny that you like went and got it, but I don't think you've taken it a day. I haven't. I What I really want to do is actually get on some like legit medicines or drugs or something that would help my hair to be thicker and fuller because you can't like there's no cream or substance wait you got medicine for your hair too i haven't i've just gotten supplements but like there's no i can't just like rub cream on my receding hairline and make hair sprout up it doesn't work that way like if i want to have hair in the spot where hair doesn't exist right now i will have to get surgery there so if you take these supplements there's no way it can isolate the hair growth to just the top of your head oh it's gonna make you hairier everywhere else your butt cheeks are gonna get even hairier i'll I'll probably have hairier butt cheeks yeah (laughs) that's exciting <laughs> abby was shocked when she found out i had hairy butt cheeks she was like matt i don't, I don't think, think the internet actually, i don't think I this is normal that. and i was like abby i'm pretty sure all men have hairy butt it's cheeks and she's like not my dad <laughs> no nope. my brother it doesn't run in my family the men in my family do not uh, don't ask the, me how i know that in other news i i got officially diagnosed with adhd let's just let's just give it up for that <laughs> i don't want to I, I never know if i want i i don't think i should make jokes about it you can make, I don't care. You can make jokes about it. What do you mean? Really? Where just, are we talking about making jokes about my hair loss or making jokes about ADHD? Both. Oh, I don't care. It's fine. B- for both? I think it's like, it's fun to make fun of yourself, you know? Yeah, I think it's fun for most people. But I think it's not fun when I make fun of you. It depends on if you're being like, if if we're like arguing and then you try to make a joke, then it's like, that actually sounded like you're being mean. That? No, but I, I like joking around. I think that's kind of fun. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> I like joking around. I, I do. Think it's really fun. 
I do. Thank you so much to Rocket Money for sponsoring today's episode. We love Rocket Money. We've actually been using it to help budget our finances for about a year now. And my favorite feature of Rocket Money by far, they can literally negotiate your bills. So think about like negotiating. It can kind of be scary. How does it do that? I'll be honest. I have no idea. I actually don't know. Rocket Money can literally negotiate your bills to 20% lower what you were already They did. So they negotiated our security bill. We used to pay, I think it was $50 a month for our security bill and they negotiated it down to $30 a month. Rocket Money is a personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions, monitors your spending, and helps lower your bills so that you can grow your savings. When I was was thinking about budgeting, I was like, blah, blah, blah. This sounds so lame. I can't do things I want. Like budgeting is holding me back. No. Budgeting Er gives you the freedom to spend your money on what you actually want to spend your money on. So So like say you're like, oh, I can't buy this because I'm budgeting. It's like, no, I can just adjust my spending elsewhere so that I can get more of what I want. Here's an example, right? So we saved $240 a year on our security bill because Rocket Money negotiated it down. So now if Abby is like, I want this bougie pair of $240 shoes. Now we're like, okay, because we saved this money in this other spot, we can spend Budgeting it Budgeting allowed here. me to spend more money here, which exactly. I wouldn't probably buy $240 pair of shoes. You wouldn't? But Rocket Money has over 5 million users and has saved a total of $500 million. Holy crap. In canceled Holy subscriptions. <laughs> Saving members up to $750 a year when using all of the app's okay. features. I know exactly what it is. I found this like Jeep. It's like a car that Griffin can drive and it's like 300 bucks. With the $750, I would gr- buy Griffin and Augie matching Jeeps so they could drive around our neighborhood. And then you'd still have $150 to spare. And then I would buy a $150 pair of shoes. No. <laughs> That's hilarious. So yeah. stop wasting money on things you don't use. Cancel your unwanted subscriptions by going to rocketmoney.com slash unplanned. That's rocketmoney.com slash unplanned. Rocketmoney.com slash unplanned. Back to the episode. What do you feel like the benefit of receiving a diagnosis of this was? I just wanted to know what was like actually going on. Like I wanted to know for real, like, do I have ADHD or am I just self-diagnosing? Because I think everybody's so quick to self-diagnose after they see a TikTok about, oh, you could have this or you could have this. And people are like, I am this way. And then I just think going to a doctor is, is the way to go. So uh, yes, I went through the appointments, which by the way, we did, we did an ad for, was it ZocDoc mm-hmm. on our podcast? And then we realized, wait a second, I can get diagnosed virtually like from a virtual doctor so that's what I did and and then it it all worked out from there uh but yeah just like knowing what I have I I can now find coping skills and coping mechanisms to help with me to focus and for me not to get as easily distracted and just to understand myself better and what's going on so that was like really, really helpful to have that. Do you feel like it was like pretty straightforward? Because they're not like, do they, are they like, do you have trouble focusing? And you're like, yep. And they're like, okay. Okay. What was crazy is they like nailed me. Like it was like they read my mail. They just knew me so well just from all the questions they're asking. They said, do you oftentimes just like walk out of a, like a conversation or a social setting and not tell anybody where you're going? And I'm like, literally all the time. I don't know why I do that, but like, we'll be hanging out and I'll be like in a group of people and I'll just like go to the bathroom or, or like go get something and not tell anybody where I'm going. But apparently that's a symptom of ADHD. I had no idea. I do mm. that all the time. So do you think that now we just have to accept like sometimes you do these things and it's like because there's a diagnosis, it's like, well, that's just how he is. Or is it something where it's like, OK, we know that you're predisposed to do this so we can do X, Y and Z to make sure that behavior doesn't happen. OK, so it's helpful to know what I have because now you as somebody who maybe I change the subject when we're, when we're talking about something or maybe I wasn't listening to something that you said. It's not like I'm not valuing you. Valuing you? I can't talk. Um, it's just my brain is predisposed to do these things that yeah, people with ADHD do. you've done that do. for the past seven years though. I feel like a diagnosis didn't really change that for me. Like I was just like, yeah, that's just Matt. He cares about me. He wants to know like my thoughts and he wants to know what I'm sharing but he just gets distracted like I feel like being like he's ADHD doesn't really it's the same thing for me I guess oh so it didn't do anything for you not for me but it wasn't for me okay it was good to get prescribed medicine so now I do have medicine for yeah it. but you haven't taken it. I have not taken the medicine yet which is fine like I don't know if you should get on I hear bl- bad things about ADHD medicine all the time well I think I'm gonna take it just like periodically when I have a day where I'm I have a work heavy load and I want to get a lot done, then I can take it and be very focused. What yeah. happens if a normal, like I shouldn't say normal, a person without ADHD takes it? Uh, Do they just combust? It just 
I mean, people people do that all the time. You hear about people in college like sharing their medicine with people and stuff. That may or it may not have It has the same effect. Happened. It just makes them share. Yeah, it kind of like elevates your heart rate, makes you super focused. Oh, it elevates your heart rate? Yeah. Um, that's one of the side effects that can happen. I and don't then, need that then. And it makes it hard for you to fall asleep. A lot of times the ADHD medicine is like, it just keeps you up. So mm. you don't want to take it at night unless you're studying for a test that you have to take so are you on adhd tiktok now i don't watch tiktok actually i'm never on my phone Mm -hmm. like i i I really just work my job and play with my kids and i don't i don't scroll on social media i don't really do that do you do that i I, i'm i'm asking you an honest question i have no idea when you ask me questions like we're not in the same household all day every day we like works we kind of live separate lives i mean like during the day though we're not together like we we both do our own thing. I don't just sit. I never sit and scroll. I feel like you scroll when you're breastfeeding, though, or when you're pumping. Sometimes when I'm pumping, when you're yeah. pumping, that's probably when you do that. Because I at least what else your, am I gonna do? I don't know, like read. I you've got me into reading. I do read when I pump too. You've got me into reading, and I really like reading now, which has been awesome. Do we think TikTok is gonna get banned? Like it's actually, already banned for me. You you banned it in your I mind. I banned it in 2023. It's off your phone, totally. I haven't had it all So year. when you're scrolling, are you scrolling on YouTube Shorts, Instagram Reels? Oh my gosh, I found myself on Facebook a couple times. You're on Facebook? <laughs> I swear. I gotta get off of that. No, you're but on, usually it's wait, Instagram. So you deleted TikTok, so now you're on Facebook Reels. Is that really what you're on? I w- it's called Reels there Facebook too. Facebook Reels. And Pinterest. Oh my gosh. You know it's bad, but Pinterest has actually been good. because so you I just did. replaced it. Like you're like, oh, I'm getting rid of no. social media. Yeah. It's so much healthier. Why is because Facebook Reels? Because my content isn't on Facebook Reels. Wait, is my content on Facebook Reels? Our, fa- our content is on Facebook <gasps> Reels. I gotta get off Facebook. We have, a, we have a Matt and Abby Facebook Reels page. Okay, well, it's never popped up, so... Okay. I'm really just avoiding my own face online. Um, no, I watch Instagram, too. Yeah, for yeah. sure, Instagram. But really, I have limitations on it, but I can crack it if I really am one to scroll so yes um i've been on facebook reels a little bit and i but pinterest is very healthy it's the most healthy platform because you just there's no comment section and there's no videos so it's just very peaceful i get the recipe i made for dinner last night pinterest that recipe last night was freaking so awesome. So good. Fire. You killed it. Thank you. Great great work, babe. So, um, yeah. But, tic- but TikTok, TikTok banned, is banned though. for me. Okay, but like, you know that the government voted to ban it, right? In Congress, they did So, that. yeah, I heard that. But then everyone still has Facebook, so I don't really understand. I don't know the Dude, processes. I legit think it could be banned now. Like, I actually think the government might do it. How does that make you feel? In the past, I would have been terrified. Because mm-hmm. at one point, I think we had like a million... F- close to a million followers on TikTok when Trump first was going to ban the app. And we had maybe a couple thousand on our other platforms. And so I was terrified because I had worked so hard to, you know, crank out these videos and build up a following on that platform. And I'm like, my whole business is going to, is going to fall apart. Like everything mm-hmm. I've, I just spent, I just spent, you know, hundreds of hours of my time grinding thousands of hours to build this up. And now it's just going to be all deleted. So I really feel for creators that are only on TikTok. I feel like it can't be real. You don't like, think so? I honestly, think it could. America runs on TikTok. Like there will be an uprising if this happens. You think so? I feel like people will be so mad because think about there's so many people's jobs, not just like influencers, but like people that own online e-commerce businesses that are like dependent on TikTok. Like, is there going to be compensation for those people? I don't know how that works. Like they make their income on it. Yeah. Like what could happen though it's is their livelihood. all of all of those people could just migrate to Instagram Reels, Facebook Reels. Do you think everyone's just going to remember shorts. and follow? Be like, oh, I loved this yeah. mug shop on TikTok. I'm going to see if I can, what was the name of that? And you're not going to think of it. Yeah. it is. I mean, it is sad. I mean, for us, TikTok was the place where we were able to grow on social media because YouTube was so hard to break into when we were doing that back in mm-hmm. back in 2019. Can I'm just saying, that? I don't think it's going to get banned. I think they're bluffing again. I've seen this one too many times. I think what the U.S. government is trying to do is they're trying to force ByteDance, which is the company that owns yeah, TikTok, just being, to sell to an yeah, American company. I think it's a show, though. So, yeah, they want TikTok to be sold to an American company. And then after that, it'll be American owned. And I think from the American perspective, then it's safer for our youth and everybody to be on there. Did you actually know that in... Um, I thought in, it was on, a financial thing. In China. So in China, I, apparently this is what's going on in China. 
they like push all these like science and technology yeah, videos and math videos and they're pushing freaking matt and abby in america <laughs> <laughs> rotten people's brains they're rotting people's brains out with matt and abby content in america so. oh that's what's wrong with this country <laughs> yeah what okay but <laughs> oh lord have mercy i'm sorry you don't feel good babe thank you do you actually though i say that wait, all the time you, you actually do go back in your text and be wait, like you I'm care sorry, about you me don't feel good, babe. you actually care can about I make me? you a tea I feel like I don't want to accept any offerings. So then it's like later, it's like, I made you your tea this morning. <laughs> I want to get your opinion on this. Yes. When you go to a public park, yeah. or like a playground with a yeah. toddler or a kid in general, there's a whole slew of unknown territory that I'm just now embarking on. And I don't really know how to handle every situation. So like, say for instance... What's your opinion on this? You're at the a public park. Somebody else's kid comes up and pushes your kid. Okay. What are you thinking? What would you, you do? You say, "Hey, don't push my kid." Like you. Oh, you, you say that. You say, "Like, hey, you can't push. No, pushing's not okay." Mm. What do you mean? Like, if somebody pushed with your their with that kid's parents standing right there, that's the thing. That's true. Okay, so what would you do? So for me, I would have a different response if the parent was there because if the parent was there, I would expect that parent to step in. Okay. Totally and if that agree. parent didn't step in, I don't think there's a circumstance where I would talk to that kid unless it was like really dangerous. Otherwise, I would just take my kid out of the situation. Yeah, I guess it depends on how big the push is. If it's like a little nudge, who cares? Yeah, if it's a if nudge, I wouldn't do if anything. If they're yeeting my child, I'm going to be like, hey don't push my kid that actually made me uncomfortable abby at the park a couple weeks back when we were um with our friends mike and ashley do you see that dad that was yelling at someone else's kid it was really uncomfortable Wait, what happened so he was yelling at these kids who kept kicking a soccer ball i guess towards where his kids were playing and he was telling the kids to go play soccer out in the field where there was like all this open grass which totally valid totally get that but he was not being chill like he was yelling at like nine-year-olds and then he, his kids were like probably four years old and they were on like the merry-go-round or the, or the little spinny thing whatever it's called so that made me uncomfy so I then almost, what do you I do if you're in. the parent of one of those nine-year-olds like someone else at the park is yelling at you. some other they, parents yelling at your kid what do you do they didn't uh, the parents didn't really do anything but if someone's yell like if someone's screaming at my kid now if my kid like punched some kid in the face and there's a parent screaming at my kid I'm going to be like, okay, I can, I can see, like, I'm, I'm not going to like really do anything. But if, if it's like some little offense and there's another parent screaming at my kid, I'm, we're, we're going to have a problem. Like, I, I'm not going to, you can't just scream at my child. Yeah. Like, I don't, I don't care what, what's going on. Like, maybe, maybe they push your kid, whatever, but you can't just scream at my child. You could, yeah. you could maybe reprimand them and say, hey, you can't do that. But to like lose your cool at someone else's child, that is completely not okay. Yeah, you can't do that. You shouldn't do that to your own kid. First of all, you shouldn't not be talking to your own child like that. But to do, but doing that to somebody else's kid, not an okay thing. This episode of Unplanned is brought to you by Kleenex Ultra Soft Tissues, your ally to help tackle your allergy symptoms this season. I'm not sure if you've noticed, but it's definitely allergy season. We have been battling many, many a uh, cold and flu and random virus that has made our noses run in this household like nonstop recently. Wouldn't you say? Yes, I would agree. I currently am sick, actually. In so. fact, you actually blew your nose today I blew and my then nose, like, five proceeded minutes ago. to show me what was in your tissue. Yes, my I have a sinus infection or something. It's it's pretty nasty. I feel special that I got to see <laughs> that. You're my wife, so you kind of, you get all me. Kleenex Ultra Soft Tissues are hypoallergenic and allergist approved, so you can attack watery eyes and battle runny noses without worrying about irritating your skin, which is also awesome because I feel like our poor boys, when their nose is running and we are rubbing their little sensitive skin constantly, I want to make sure it's something that is hypoallergenic and just sensitive to those fresh baby skins. I agree. Sometimes when I use like a paper towel i feel bad because it kind of you know it's it's coarse on the skin I, i'd rather use a kleenex where it's soft for this allergy season grab kleenex and face allergies head on here's another hard thing that i've noticed if you bring a ball your own ball to the park and your kid is playing with it and then another kid comes and takes it what do you do <laughs> once again for me my answer changes if the p- other parent is present or say it's a place where all the toys are shared and your kid is playing with something and some other kid takes it. Mm-hmm. It's so, it, there's just, I'm, I'm trying to figure out how, where I stand on these things because it is 
so context matters so much and that's what i'm saying it's complex like the context really matters and it's not like a a one-size-fits-all situation you have to you know confront every situation differently and why do we force someone else i've been asking myself is like why do we force our kids to share we don't share everything we own like sometimes we have things that are just ours and so it's like if a toy is special to my kid and like yes i'm never going to encourage that but if it's like i feel like this is like their thing i don't know that i think i I have to let every other kid play with it. Something I've been thinking about as a parent is when to use distraction because I know that if my child wants to stick things into an outlet, right? Like that's mm-hmm. not safe, mm-hmm. but maybe rather than just telling him, no, you can't do that and Griffin getting mad and, and screaming and crying, maybe I just distract him and I'm like, oh, look at this ball over here. And then we go play with a ball. I feel like distraction is so useful, even as an adult, like if it, if we're having a disagreement and we're on a car ride or something and I don't want us to go down a path that could lead into a fight, I'm going to use a distraction on you and be like, hey, what, what do you think about that shop across the street? Maybe we should go there You're sometime. You're so smooth with it, too. I know. I'm pretty smart. You're so smooth. <laughs> I never know when you're pulling one on me. <laughs> um, that's so true because I feel like you can do both. You can be like, that's not safe. Let's go play with your truck over here. Yeah. Like things like that. Yeah. But yeah, I think it's just a whole new world that I'm like trying to navigate and every parent is so different. Like also this kid in the park would not stop hugging Griffin to a point where it made Griffin really uncomfortable. Like yeah you got to get your kid out of that situation and so I was like, I had to help him because he wasn't fighting the kid. Matt, he just went limp. He was just like, uh, and like looking at me he was like please save me mom so i just like i kind of like found the parent and i like made eye contact with her so she would notice and step in because what was i gonna do like physically pry this child that's the other thing i don't want any other adult really touching my kid like Ooh, yeah. someone tried to pick him up one time and i was like he, mm, yeah no doesn't i'm not the type of parent to freak out though i'm pretty chill but I don't want you to touch my kid. You know, it kind of bothers me and I don't think people mean it in a bad way, but it does make me a little uncomfy if we see somebody out in public and then the first thing they want to go do is look at our kids in the face. That's just rude. Because we don't show their faces online. I think that's just incredibly rude because it's like we take great effort to keep them away from that only for you in person to just violate that and we're not going to stay inside all the time. Okay. Legitimate question for you. Okay. Are we moving to Nashville? Are we? I feel like it'd be fun for the summertime, like two months in Nashville would be so much fun. (laughs) Would be fun. I'm I'm inspired by the people in Nashville. Yeah. They are, I thought people were nice in Phoenix. They're actually rude compared to Nashville. People in Nashville are so nice. They're so nice. I've been in Nashville pretty much every month for the past like four months recording music. And then we've had quite a few podcast guests in Nashville. So we're always in Nashville and I love the people there. I love the Southern hospitality. Oh my gosh, how Everybody's nice is so it that kind. the Masters let us use their studio and then I drive know. us? They were so kind. Yeah, and Tori then, and Chad Masters from YouTube, if you guys have heard of them, they just like... Didn't even know us. I literally didn't know us and we're just like, you guys can use our house to record a podcast with uh, Carlos and Alexa Penavega. And we're like, what? Like, you guys are so nice. I was alone with a big suitcase and just walking outside down this like little strip mall area and another person just walking on outside that wasn't even going inside yeah opened the door for me to help me get my suitcase into this little restaurant like everyone was so nice and i'm inspired also by like the first of all there's so many people that we know there not like super well but like know them but then also like it's very creative space place like there's creativity flowing in nashville yeah so that'd be fun it's also less hot than phoenix so yeah sure let's well that's why what i'm thinking because like phoenix here gets so freaking hot in the summer it's like 120 every day you cannot take your kids outside it's way too hot to play with your kids and so i thought what if we go somewhere else for the summer just so that we can actually take our kids outside and be outside and I think Nashville might be the spot because one, we have community there. We know a lot of people. There's so many nice people. And then two, I'm there all the time anyway, recording music. And I could actually knock out maybe an EP or record a bunch of new songs while we're there um, as I pursue this artist project that I'm working on. So I think it could be a really great spot for us to go this summer. Mm -hmm. What have your thoughts been on the, the recent music? Did you like the more upbeat song that I just put out, Unfollow Me? Or do you like the more... Uh, chill, like almost Jack Johnson vibes of um, I like right now. 
I always like the chill Jack Johnson vibes. Okay. Because that's like, here's the thing about me. I'll be honest. I don't care about music and I'm married to an artist. Okay. So it's hard because. Wait, yes, because you don't. I don't like music. You're right. Like a lot of times when I've turned music on, you're like, turn that off. (laughs) 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 And it's not even my own music. It's just like any music. No, I would never say that to your music. Any music at all. I would never say that to your music because in general, I just am like. I don't know why. I'm sorry. What's sweet is my very first song, which is definitely my worst song that I've ever put out. You listen to that one over and over and mm-hmm. over. And I realized it was it was because it was made for you. And even though it was like definitely my worst song by far, I guess you just loved the, yeah, loved the, the messaging behind it and loved well, it. Well, because was- I literally can listen to that and like in a way, it obviously sounds different, but be transported to sitting on my parents' lawn. Yeah our one year dating anniversary you giving me this promise ring and that song i think you sang it that night too right uh i think i did yeah when i gave you the promise ring and then i originally wrote it for our six month dating anniversary yeah in my parents but, living room with my parents all around it was around christmas yeah it was but, just so sweet thank you and you gave me those hot pink headphones thanks yeah i did do you still have those hot pink headphones? and you got me that candle and necklace from half off half yeah <laughs> What a sweet gesture. <laughs> oh my gosh. It's kind of crazy, Abby, because like we've been together almost eight years. Here I was playing you songs on the guitar and writing you music. And now I'm actually like making music and releasing it. And guess what? Today you just had your first acting class, right? You're, no, you it wasn't an acting a, class. It was Don't a, even mention it. it was it's a, not a big deal. Let's it was, talk about you. It was okay, with but an acting let me coach. say. It was with an acting coach, right? No, okay, so no, I'm not even getting into that because I don't even know what that's going to Why are you not wanting to talk about acting? But I want to talk about you. So. You're an amazing actress. The thing is that's funny is that like everyone having these questions about you and like making music and they're like, why? I'm like, yeah. why do you have those questions? But then I realized like I've just been around you. Like everyone that's been around you knows that you love to sing. And that, like, one of your dreams and passions. So I'm, like, confused when other people are confused. But I'm, I understand now, like, if they're only following you online and don't, like, see that side of you, then I'm guessing then they can be like, well, it's like you I was sing to me at our wedding. I was doing music well before I was ever a YouTuber, TikToker, podcaster. So I think people just, like, they see me as this, like, family man, uh, you know, guy on a couple's account on TikTok. And they're like, why are you, like, trying to do music? Um, but it's just, it's something that's always been a part of me. And so it's just like, I kind of have to pursue it Mm -hmm. in a way. Like I I love it so much. Like I kind of have to go for it. I've always like been really inspired by people who, even when the odds are stacked against them, even when they're predisposed to fail and it shouldn't work, they just like push through and and work their butt off and make something happen. I was inspired by like stories like that. So I'm hoping that maybe that's my story too. I'm hoping that maybe me as a dad with two kids at 25 who starts making music at literally 25 when no artist ever makes it at 25. Like if you want to make it in the, in the music industry, you start when you're like 14 and you usually take off as like in your late teens. Like Tate McRae took off as a teenager. Now I think she's like 21. Benson Boone took off when he was in his teens. So like it's it's a young person's industry. You ha- you have to be young to make oh, it. Come on, you're but, young. Twenty five. But like no, but like twenty five is old. Like you don't see twenty five is a new fifteen. It's like it's very rare though. So I don't know. I just maybe it works out. Maybe it doesn't. But like I'm gonna keep releasing my my music every month and just kind of see what happens. I'm excited to see you act. I really think you could book some roles. Like I was so happy that you were on the acting call today because I'm like Abby, you can totally be an actress. I see. Here's the thing that's different between you and me. What? Like, you're going to do this, and you're going to take it to, like, the nth degree. You're going to okay. keep going, like, and success for you will be, like, the top, being the top of it. For me, I could easily just do this as, like, a passion hobby or, like, a me thing that, like, oh, like, this is, like, my special creativity thing. Um, and not, like, take it to, like, oh, I got to be lead roles. First of all, I don't think I'm capable of that. But you, second you of totally all. You totally are. You totally are. I wouldn't want to take it that to that level. I just like love being normal. <laughs> All I'm saying is the Pena Vegas told us that they are making a production company. And I feel like with whatever they do with that, you should audition for the produ- their production company. I'll audition. Maybe. I don't know. I don't want to put that out there. and People will keep me accountable. But I am excited. I think I might sign up for an acting class. So I love being told what to do. Like, And I love collaborating. 
I shouldn't say it that way. Like, but I love. Wait, you love being told what to do? Yeah. <laughs> I'm really good at taking direction and like running with it. I feel like. Maybe you like direction, but you don't like constructive criticism because I love constructive feedback from people. But if you ever show me one of your makeup videos or something, I have to be really careful. Well, I think you're just I, unique because you're my husband. Yeah. You just want me to like hype you up. You don't want me to say anything. Yeah. As my husband. It. Yeah. No, I do like, I want your constructive. But like I legit want you. When I give I, you, when you, I show you constructive you, feedback and I like it. But when I show you my stuff, I want you to rip it to shreds. Like I, want I you will to never say, do that. I want you to say I'm like. I'm just not that person. Fix this. Fix this. This could be stronger. Fix this. Like I want to be better. So it's kind of. I'm just not that I'm person. I'm weird like that, I guess. Hey, quick warning. If you're in the car with kids, you might want to listen to this without your kids in the car with you. Okay, now let's continue on. Are we going to tell our kids about Santa Claus and the Easter Bunny? Yes or no? Santa Claus? It's March right now. (laughs) But okay, Easter Bunny, that's coming up. Easter, right? So like Santa Claus, Easter Bunny. Are we going to do that stuff with our kids? Why or why not? I don't know. Honestly, I don't have a... I might as well... I don't have a firm opinion on it, but I don't, I don't like lying to my kids. But at the same time, like the fun fun and joy of like waking up on Easter morning and the Easter bunny brought all the eggs or waking up on Christmas morning and Santa brought all the presents. Like that's so much fun as a kid. Like maybe we can still experience that magic as adults. Yeah. I guess like I've heard from some people. So then it's not like this sad moment. Yeah. But I guess like we can just tell our kids it's us. Like maybe we don't have to tell them that it's. Or what if we Easter said Bunny. things like maybe the Easter Bunny brought it? I don't That's know. That's confusing. I mean, think about a three year old. Like they just need to. Know. I love that. I honestly it- kind of like. For me, the Easter Bunny. For some reason, I don't have as much trauma associated as I do with Santa Claus. I don't like the idea of lying to our kids, but then I also don't like the idea of our kids spoiling it all to their friends. Because think about if all but their I friends. But I also love the idea of our kids experiencing magic. Yeah. I mean, like, I think that you can, here's the thing that you, maybe you can do. You can include imagination into these holidays yeah. and like these traditions without outright lying. Maybe like, the magic like, can exist. Let's find some hidden eggs and like, I wonder who put these here and like, that can be fun without, yeah. I don't know, but then it's like, is it the Another same thing? Another thing though, like, okay, talking to your four-year-old about the Easter bunny coming is completely different than talking to your nine-year-old about the Easter bunny coming. You know, like that's a completely different stage of life. So maybe we just establish like by the age of eight, we tell them the truth. Cause for me, like I was really prying my parents and, you know, digging for them to come clean and tell me the truth about like Santa and stuff when I was eight. And I think by that time, I was just like, I was too old for it. So I don't know. Like when you're a four-year-old. Well, yeah, I a four, think maybe a four-year-old, we have the boundary, like when they ask about it, then we tell them. But as a four-year-old, like you're not going to, it's not going to screw with you that you believed in the Easter Bunny as a four-year-old or a five-year-old. You know, it's like everything is magic at that time. You literally believe anything that happens to you. It's like, yeah, why does so it rain? It's maybe like, because the, it cause the rain God kids. made it rain. Okay. Like, like, like a four-year-old would literally believe anything anybody says, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Ah, that's tricky. I, I don't have a, f- a firm opinion on that because I, I do want our kids to experience that magic. Well, they're getting Easter baskets this year and we're doing an Easter egg hunt. You know so. what I'm so excited for? Disney World with our kids here in the next couple I of years. Know. They are going to, oh, they're going to have a blast. They, what they really need is a trash truck world. That is the best thing is like seeing your kid experience everything. Griffin loves trash trucks because they, yeah. why? Because they're these, ma- like these massive, massive vehicles that take our trash. And it's actually really cool. Like as adults, we just are like, yeah, that's a trash truck. Like we see that every no, week. No, but when you actually study how those things pick up the trash cans and lift it up and dump it, it's really impressive. It's I really cool. I see why they're into that. But our kids just they're not used to everything that we're used to. So all of it is a new stimulus on their brain. Like Augie recently will just like roll and roll and roll and find the little like door stoppers yes, on our doors and, and just start, start smacking the door. Stopper goes, the brr, 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 and it's so cute. And he just loves it. Like to him, it's a toy. Yeah. We'll be in another room. And we're like, Oh my, how did he find that? <laughs> he can roll like 20 feet. It's insane. <laughs> they're the best kids ever. Yeah. I love that. I just love seeing the world through the eyes of a little kid oh yeah because they're just they make everything so much more fun they're so much happier now they do get sad just as quickly as they'll get happy but i don't know like when when they're sad though you know that they're going to be happy again in a couple minutes and it's only a temporary thing matt i'm really glad you bring this up because this reminds me of a recent 
statement of yours that I caught on video. A statement of mine. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Don't. Yes. <laughs> you didn't catch oh. it on video, did you? Dang, I missed it. You literally were like a half second off of hearing me say that I wanted a baby number three. You heard it here, folks. You heard it right here. I'm going to hate myself for saying that. Well, we were actually talking about that. Maybe, maybe in a long while from now, we could have another little uh, baby Matt or baby I just, Abby. Like, it's just so much. Like we find, No, we don't need it to be like... Right I just love our kids quick. so, so much. And I'm just like, oh, like another one would be so great. But I, it just... Uh, it would be crazy. It would be great because we couldn't get it wrong either way because like we have another one and it's a boy and he's just like our other boy's best friend or we get, go for another one and we get to see like experience what our little daughter would be like here's the thing the newborn stage can we just be honest it's horrible Matt, can you quit saying it's that horrible <laughs> it's, like it's I, not I mean, and and look I'm you're not gonna the, miss I'm, it i'm not the only one dealing with this but like it's exhausting you're not getting sleep you I just know. you you get like literally depressed like it's it's so so hard so like to want to go through that again i'm like no but like to have another kid like if we yeah. could just make one magically appear that's the same age as like augie or griffin right now or one in between them oh my gosh that would be amazing if that if we could just snap our fingers and boom child no pregnancy no no postpartum no late nights mm -hmm. you know like if that was something we could just completely skip, yeah, that would be awesome. You're gonna miss it though. I really do think like a couple years from now, you'll. That's just how people have families. Like they keep yeah. having them because you do start to miss like those really tough. Like you said, like the most challenging things in life are the most rewarding. Yeah. And um, I mean, obviously, n no time soon, and we're not like trying to tease that. But it was just funny that that was a conversation that came up on Sunday morning. I legit think I would be down if we could wait like a while. <laughs> yeah. Like I'm talking like five years. Like what if we have like a six and seven year old, and then we have like a newborn? Well, we have. Think a six you might and regret that gap. I don't. I mean, people do it all the time. Though. Then they're like, not you, gonna play together. You see as families much. like that. I know time. they do, but but like I what? feel like everyone's saying like anytime that they've had an age gap, they're like, I do wish they were a little sooner. Even though it is, there are some perks. And then the people that have kids back to back are like, oh, it was just they're all they're all just buddies. But then there's I don't know. exceptions, of course. But then you can also it, maybe it motivates you to go out and meet more people so that your kid has someone to play Personally, with. Personally, I if I have the option to have all my kids in my 20s, I would do that. I mean, we could I, I guess we could do that. Easily. You're I'm 25. You're 25 right now. I'm, we're, we're both 25. So we could knock them all out while we're in our 20s. That just seems so scary though to like go back and do that again. No, for sure. I are you, agree. Are it's you scary. scared? Do yes. you want to get birth again? I guess you'd get another C-section, right? I, that's the least of my worries. What do you dislike more? The post the uh, postpartum or like pregnancy? Postpartum. Yeah, that's yeah, that's true. Postpartum is really really challenging. I will say the one perk though of like when you knock out more babies back to back, that we know what to do now. We we get how this works. Oh, for sure. We have all the stuff. We have the baby spoons, the baby plates, the baby clothes, all the toys, the all the develop all the developmental the activities. Machines, We've got literally everything that we need. I need to shut up because I'm going to literally talk our way into freaking making another baby. <laughs> no, I have an IUD. You just got an IUD. You like <laughs> We're very not It's not even like a real conversation, but I think it was just funny that that was brought up. You wouldn't do that to me, right? Like just like we end up like doing it and then you tell me that you got the IUD out without telling. Not answer that question for you yourself. You wouldn't do that. You wouldn't do that. That's that. psychotic. That would, that would be bad. That would be really bad. No, that's extremely that's not that should not, not be allowed. That's, that's not, not okay. that's not actually like consent either. Oh, that's true. That is Like you consent. can't when you're consenting to do that with somebody, you are Oh yeah, you're like assuming that there's birth control present. No, no, or, no, not assuming. You can't you, assume you, that. You need to have that conversation, right? Yes. And if we've, you we've had that conversation. Yes. So yeah. It, if I, I change things without telling you, then that's not yeah. proper consent. I'm glad yeah. that we got that on tape. <laughs> Oh my gosh, the fact that you would even go there and put me in that light is crazy. I'm just kidding. Well, you need to go take a nap. I need to go play with my kids. Well, their bedtime is in two hours and it's family time now, so we got to let you guys go. Yes. But um, until next week, we're yeah. really thankful for you guys tuning in. Let me let me know what you guys think about my shaved head in the comments. No, no. It's okay. I know it doesn't look that great. We'll see you guys in the next episode. I do miss Bye. your hair sometimes. Okay. <laughs>